Hello everyone, Anthony Samroff from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com and this is the third in my series of videos to help you become a better communicator, my series of videos on how to make small talk. So in our last video I was talking about how it's important not just to be a good listener but to be able to volunteer some information of yourself because when we really know someone we don't always ask each other questions. We just kind of say what we think and we riff off each other. And sometimes if you ask someone too many questions, they might feel like you're putting them on the spotlight. So it's great to get used to talking about ourselves and things that we find interesting or little things that happen to us. And now we're gonna talk more about that today because stories are how we connect with each other. I wasn't really wired up to tell stories. In fact, except for maybe around people that I knew well, I remember when it occurred to me, I realized that often some little thing would go in my head. I'd, I'd remember something I'd done and I'd automatically go, uh, might, not, might as well not say that. Who, who cares? You know, who'd be interested in that? And I got a real sense of how important this is while I was practicing speaking to strangers and improving my social skills. When one night I said, well, how about this? I'll practice just if whatever detail comes to my head, whatever story comes to my head, I'll just share that. And I remember one, um, in fact, I'll save it for later. Uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the importance of, of using stories and kind of overcoming that barrier, um, which is the, the thought that people won't be interested in you. Because the secret is actually, it doesn't always have to be like super interesting or useful or funny, because in the early stages of your interaction with someone else, you're just finding points to connect on and to get more familiar with each other. Part of the appeal that it is that it's not a big deal. If you work hard, then other people will feel like they have to work hard around you. But when you reveal just a little bit of yourself by saying whatever comes to mind, you're kind of demonstrating that you're okay with whatever comes up and you're okay with going with the flow. Um, you're setting this precedent. Whether you know it or not, when you go into social situations, people are looking at for social cues from you just as much as you're looking for social cues from them they might be as anxious as you are, they might be more anxious than you are, they might be extroverted on the outside but shy on the inside. You just never know what a, another person is, is, is bringing to the table. So when you go into a situation ready to lead, re ready to tell your little stories, you're saying to other people, hey, it's cool, whatever comes up um, is interesting to me, is, is fine to say, um, whatever comes up for you, it's fine to say as well, you don't have to work too hard. Actually, I should say, the earlier on you are in interaction, the shorter your stories should be. So when you first meet someone, it's great to tell what I call a micro-anecdote. I coined the term micro-anecdote in my short book, How to Make Small Talk. You can find it on Amazon Kindle. To capture the idea of just offering a little detail from your personal experience or a little story from your own life that exemplifies exemplifies what you're saying because a full-length anecdote might demand too much time and attention from someone when you've just started talking or supposing they're in the middle of a train of thought you might be able to slip in a micro anecdote but you couldn't tell a whole story uh, for example if someone said um, I'm going camping this weekend instead of just saying something cliched like oh that's cool where are you headed you could say something like oh I love camping but I've not gone in ages in fact, I remember dreading the rain the first time I went, but the first night I was there and it rained, the sound of the rain on the tent like just lulled me to sleep and I really loved it. I, I should really go back sometime. This kind of response gives far more options for the person listening to hook into. Um, they can talk about the sound of rain falling on the tent. Oh, I really like that too. Or tell you how they first got hooked on camping or tell you another story. And if they wanna tell you where they're going, they'll probably say it anyway. So when you say a little story like that, a micro anecdote, you are actually inviting the other person to respond, just not by asking a question. Um, if someone says, I like cooking, you say, I also like 
well, you'd have to think of one for your own life. The example I use in my book is I also like cooking, but it can be stressful if I have to prepare more than one dish at a time. In fact, I used to chase my girlfriend out of the kitchen when I was cooking because I'd snap at her if she tried to speak to me. So the rule was no no one in the kitchen while I'm cooking. And you see, a little story like that is much easier to relate to than a kind of stock response. One thing you should do at, at, at the beginning like, is to just make a special effort to remember to prepare. Uh, well, what I mean is remember the little things that happen to you. If anything funny or quirky happens to you, just put it down on your phone. Just save it on your phone or write a little note to give you little little things to slip into conversation because these are really the details of your life. They're the things that make you you. You might not think other people will be interested in it. They'll, they're, they're probably more interested in it than most of the things that snap to mind when you don't make an effort because they might have been preconditioned by um, situations when you're in a child or something like that and people didn't take as much interest in you. If you want to think of longer stories to tell later on in an interaction, there's loads of good topics. Uh, something funny or ironic that reveals a deep universal truth about the human condition. Something you thought was a smart idea at the time but turned out to be stupid in hindsight. And when you tell a story like that, you should focus on how you felt and what you learned from it. Anything adventurous, a struggle you shared with someone else that brought you closer together. That reminds me of the story I thought I'd tell you later. I remember I was on a self-help retreat once and a couple of guys took me down to the river one day on our time off. And they just went into the cold water. And as much as I wanted to jump in, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And what I really loved was the kind of coach, well, they put their arms behind my back and they dunked me gently into the river three times with my consent. And what I really loved about that is it's totally the kind of thing that you get called a pussy or got made fun of for in school, like not being as resilient, but rather than being judged for it, they like helped me step into that. And it was a really great moment of bonding. And that was one of the stories that I remembered the first night that I decided well, I noticed that I kept on thinking about stories but not actually saying them to people because I was embarrassed or I thought they might not be interested. When I tested it, I found out that telling something like that, like a wee touching story, the other person could think of a similar thing or go, yeah, yeah, I can totally see why that would, would be important because it is true, we are often shamed when we're young for things like that. But it was really nice that those guys were like friendly to you and supported you in becoming more. So something that didn't happen, uh, you didn't want to happen to you that turned out for the best, something that you did want, but when you got it, it turned out not to be what it was expected. A funny or like unlikely story of a romantic thing that happened or juicy, unexpected seduction. Uh, a touching story, a naive story of something you did because you didn't know any better. Something that just happened earlier on today or in the week, that's something I've advised you to take a log of. So um, even even something annoying, but the, the trick is when you say something that happened to you that's annoying, you don't say it in a negative way. You turn it into a comedy of errors. So one that I always remember is I once lost my phone. So I went out and bought a new SIM card and I put it in my old phone. But when I tried to sync up the data in the phone, I realized I couldn't remember my password because they make you use capital and small letters and at signs and all sorts of bizarre shit. So I couldn't remember the password. So I tried to reset it and they told me I needed a pin code, which they said that they sent to my other device, meaning the phone that I just lost. So I was swearing at my head off at the time, but it made a pretty good story that week, especially when I told people that the I needed to give them the number of my debit card to get into the phone, but the debit card had recently gone out of date, so I'd cut it into pieces. I went into Amazon and eBay, but they'd started out the number of my phone. Okay, that's my video on the importance of telling stories and how you can use a micro anecdote, just a little detail, a little memory. It can even be a few line, one or two or three sentences long, 
if you can just st slip those into conversations, they'll go a long way to helping you get out of your head and get out of conceptual topics, philosophical, um, political, which are valid as well, but sometimes we don't necessarily want to talk about those things on a night out or with someone that you've just met. There's a dread of having this feeling in conversations where it just feels like mechanical or like you're in a job interview. And a really, really great way to avoid the job interview conversation is to share your micro anecdotes. Thank you very much. I'm Anthony Samaroff. If you're interested, I've created a social skills mentorship program. If you would like to be part of that, send me a private message on Facebook or send me an email to anthony at beyourselfandloveit.com. Until next time, be yourself. Well, don't just be yourself, be yourself and love it.